So today I want to do something a little bit different. Um, last week I heard that my favorite author of my favorite book series, Outlander, finally finished her ninth book, the ninth book in the series. And generally when that happens, when she finishes another book, I tend to reread all of the books um, up until that point again, just to get, you know, re-familiarize myself with the characters and get ready for the next book. And it generally takes a while for that to happen after she finishes writing. So I definitely have some time. But as I was thinking of doing that, I thought it would be fun to actually share with you some of my favorite book series. Now, I'm not going to be ranking them in order of, you know, top 10 or best ones um, because they just, they hold a different place for me um, in very different parts of my life and different times. Um, Outlander, of course, always just kind of sits at the top, so there's really not a ranking system that I am going to be putting these in. I tend to gravitate towards a book series rather than a just a one-off book. I really get attached to characters and to their story. And so I, of course, I want more. I'm a greedy little Gus and I want, I want to hear more of their story. So yeah, I like to have books that are, you know, maybe three, four, or even more books in a series that that um, goes along with the same characters and you know of course introducing other characters as they go along but for the most part with you know within the same kind of storyline i really gravitate towards um towards books like that to, towards series i also listen to my books on audio and this was something that i started to do i don't know probably seven or eight years ago um, actually, Outlander was my very first audiobook. Um, and in most cases, I will still buy the books, obviously. Um, I, there's just, there is something about the physical book that I love. If it's, if, especially if it's a book or a series that I really, really enjoyed, I will still buy the book just to have the physical, um, that physical thing. But there's something about, listening to books on audio and having basically somebody tell you a story that for me it's it's it goes deeper i actually get deeper into the story than if i'm just reading it myself i tend to get distracted pretty easily when i'm reading um, i don't really take enough time for myself to just sit down and read a book so um, I'm a big multitasker. So audiobooks offer me that opportunity to do some other things. I can be, you know, washing the dishes, putting on my makeup, um, gardening. I love listening to audiobooks when I garden or if when I'm driving in the car. And then I actually get the opportunity to finish a book um, because I just will not just sit down and. Um, and stop and read it's just not it's not in my countenance so audiobooks are fantastic for me I love them and um, I've had an account with audible for a really long time and um, especially there's some books that I love absolutely love the narrators I love what they do with the voices and the accents Outlander of course is one um, the the woman who narrates the books her name is Davina Porter and she is amazing she is absolutely brilliant um, she really even though some of the, a lot of the characters are Scottish and they have a very similar accent she changes them slightly so you know exactly who is speaking when she's doing the audiobooks audiobooks are just my preferred way of consuming books um, but uh, if you haven't tried it, I highly suggest you do it. If, if it's something that you like, it's, um, it's a great way to, to get more books in. I've, I've definitely read a lot more books through audiobooks than I ever have by just physically reading them. So as I was putting this list together, I realized that I clearly have a type. Um, all of these books have some sort of historical basis. Um, I clearly like historical fiction. And 
I love, I really love it when fictional characters just kind of get weaved into historical events and meet actual historical people. Most of the books in this list have some sort of magical element to them. And a lot of them have some time travel, but pretty much all of them also have a female lead character. So if you happen to know any more book series that kind of tick all of those boxes, I would love to hear your recommendations of any. Um, I'm always on the on the hunt, although I will be pretty busy with rereading Outlander <laughs> very soon, but I'm always wanting to hear more uh, book recommendations. So if you have any, please let me know. So first I want to say that yes, I do absolutely love a particular book series of a young boy wizard and his friends, um, but I really don't want to talk about the author that shall not be named, so I'm not going to include that book series in this video. You know who I'm talking about and they just don't need any more publicity, so we're just going to skip it. Okay, so first off, obviously, is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Um, if you are not familiar with Outlander, I would like to welcome you out from under your rock because it has been a phenomenon since it came out in 1991. Um, there's eight, well, eight books currently in the series. There's a ninth one on its way. And it's, it's actually now a, um, a TV show on stars. It's comprised of one epic story. And each of the eight books kind of acts like a chapter within the story, this, this huge story that I think for now it's kind of spanning 30 years at this point. You do absolutely have to read them in order the way that they were published in order to, to really understand everything that's going on. They're not a standalone book. Her writing style and, I mean, the story itself is phenomenal and it's really pulled me in, but her writing style is amazing. I absolutely love the way she writes. I love her language. I love how she forms these characters. I'm actually very impressed with the show. Uh, I generally, whenever there's a TV show that's made from a book, um, I generally kind of try to separate them out in my mind as, you know, two completely different things. Um, and I still do that with the show, but because she, Diana Gabaldon was actually a consultant on the show, they've really kept very true to the books. Uh, there's, there are some changes in it, uh, but I don't think that they really change the storyline, but they, um, it's just things aren't as easy to put in a TV show as they are in, in a book. So um, they've done a really good job with that and there's no massively drastic changes. So if you've, liked the, if you've liked the books, I think you'll like the show. And please, if you like the show, absolutely, absolutely read the books. Um, the books obviously go into a lot more depth than, than the show does. Okay, so what is Outlander about? Uh, well, it begins in 1945. Claire Randall is a British uh, former combat nurse uh, from World War II. And after the war, her and her husband are reunited and they go to Scotland on a kind of, um, kind of a second honeymoon, I guess. And she ends up finding this group of standing stones up on a hill and subsequently falls through time and ends up in the same spot in 1743. Um, of course, she's, you know, completely confused, has no idea what's going on. And she gets picked up by this band of Highlanders and um, gets kind of whisked away. It's, it's, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of bad things tend to happen to Claire. Um, she almost gets raped. Um, she's, and so anyway, she gets kind of, you know, taken by this band of um, Highlanders and there's an injured man there. His name is Jamie Frazier. 
being a combat nurse, she, you know, is, is able to kind of help him and, and take care of him, but is still trying to figure out what in the heck is going on. Um, she's clearly not in her time. And um, so, yeah, so the story just kind of begins with that, you know, her dealing with this, um, this time travel and just trying to stay alive, basically. Um, but the whole story in and of itself is a, it's a historical drama. It's a love story at its core. Um, and it's, it's beautifully done. It is a wonderful story. I know I'm probably not even doing it justice by this explanation, but there's so much into it. That's just the tip of the iceberg from just the first book. Um, but they, you know, there's a little bit of time travel back and forth, but not a whole lot. That's not the main crux of it. The, I think the ramifications of the time travel is more, I would say more um, prevalent in it than actual time travel itself. Um, but yeah, it spans, you know, many, many years and the characters are wonderful and well-rounded and just absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful love story. It's action packed. My husband actually loves the books. Um, he's, com he's watched all the shows with me. He's read all the books. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're a wonderful set of characters that, um, that I've just absolutely fallen in love with. So the second series, it's, it's called the found things series. The first book is called the little shop of found things. Um, it's written by Paula Braxton and there's four books in the series so far. I think the last book just came out fairly recently. I've only read the first two books of this, of the series. I haven't read the last two. So this was actually a surprisingly enjoyable read. I was not expecting much. I think this was one of the books that I had in a book club at some point. Uh, so it wasn't something that I generally just picked up on my own, but I really enjoyed it. And again, it ticks like so many boxes. I can't believe I came, I didn't come across this before. But it's about a woman, her name is, um, Xanthi Westlake and her and her mother move from London to this historic town of Marlborough. Her mother has just bought a um, an antique shop and since she was a kid Xanthi has always had this um, this affinity to antique things and 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 vintage items and when she touches them she's actually able to kind of feel their past and what has gone on with them, um, where they've been, where they come from, any stories that, that they hold. She's always kind of been able to do that. On a buying trip at an English estate nearby, she finds this Victorian chatelaine and it actually, it calls to her and she's able to kind of feel this same thing but it actually takes her back in time it it for a short moment she goes back in time um when she touches this item so shortly after she comes back to her own time she's actually confronted by a ghost uh, from that time she's kind of threatened by this ghost and has is told that if she doesn't help her kind of right this injustice of a young girl that the ghost is going to harm her mother and is you know going to do all of these horrible things and so Xanthi is kind of forced to um I guess kind of solve solve this issue it's not really a crime it was a, a a crime that this girl was was um convicted of or accused of but she didn't do it so she wanted to right this wrong it's, it's a really interesting um story there's it's funny there's a there's a woman in the in the town who owns a tea shop and the way that they describe her she's a vintage gal like she's she dresses in vintage she does her hair in vintage and it's just it's a really interesting um aspect to see that somebody you know like us from the vintage community is described in a book like this it's it's again the magical element some time travel and it's it's fairly well written. I really like the characters. Uh, I like the way that she um, 
again, weaves in some of the historical aspects um, of, of the time and then that area that she's living. Um, yeah, it was just a fun read. I, I very much enjoyed the first two books at least, and I'm looking forward to the next two as well. Okay, so my next series is the All Souls series, um, better known as A Discovery of Witches. And this is another one that has been fairly recently made into a TV show. It's on Sundance now. Um, and I'm actually really happy with how the show has turned out. I mean, the lead character is played by Matthew Good. So yeah, I'm a happy gal with that one. So this book series follows uh, Diana Bishop. She's a historian, she's an American historian, and she's a reluctant witch. Um, within this book, um, vampires, witches, and demons live among humans. And uh, of course, they're still secret. They don't let everybody know who they are. Um, I was kind of worried when I started to read this book that it was going to be like an adult version of Twilight. Um, and there are definitely some little aspects of that, but the writing is so much better. <laughs> the story is fantastic. So it starts off with um, Diana finding this book called Ashmole 782, um, which is supposed to be kind of like the book of life for these creatures. Um, it's supposed to, I guess, give the origin stories of all of the creatures of of witches and demons and uh, vampires. Um, and so she meets up with a geneticist who happens to be a vampire. His name is um, Matthew Claremont. He's played by Matthew Good. And they are trying to kind of figure out this, this book and realize that a lot of the other creatures are going to try and steal this book. They want it for themselves. So they're trying to protect it while they're also trying to study it and figure out what is, you know, what is actually in this book. Um, it's a magical book, so you can't just open it up and read it. Um, and of course the two end up falling in love and they, you know, but forming an alliance of a witch and a vampire um, is kind of frowned upon in this, in this world. And of course, falling in love is even more frowned upon. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it all forms around this book, but there's, there's so much that goes into it. There's, um, there's a bit of time travel, although they call it time walking in this book. And, and there's a difference to me because it's, it's intentional. They know what they're doing. They, they know exactly where they're going. Whereas something like Outlander, it's, accidental and you know a lot of it is just trying to figure out how this whole thing works whereas in um, discovery of witches they know how it works they know how to use it and they can go back and forth so the the fear element is kind of gone from that but it's really interesting that they can go back in time and um, meet with historical figures and of course Diana Bishop being a historian is incredibly exciting for her to be able to meet, um, you know, characters like the Queen of England, um, Queen Elizabeth, Sir Walter Raleigh and Kit Marlowe. And, you know, there's it's it's kind of interesting to see how this uh, this person of our time is meeting, you know, some of these people that she has studied and and has has, has such reverence for in her life. The love story is not nearly as intense as I would like it to be, but it's good. I'm happy. Um, I really like all of the characters in here. They're I think they're very well rounded and um, the last book, The Times Convert, is, although it's still within the realm of the story, it's actually more about one of the other characters. Um, and I like that that was kind of an offshoot. So the, the All Souls trilogy is really just the first three books. The Times Convert is, um, 
it's part of it because a lot of the characters are still in there, but it's really kind of an offshoot off one of the um, one of the other characters, and it's it's nice to see a little bit more information about him um, and less about Diana and Matthew all the time. So this series, um, I read this years ago, so I apologize if I'm a little shaky on some of the details, but I really enjoyed it. It's the, um, the Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. And it is definitely like a young adult type book, um, a type series, because the main arc follows these two, um, two teenage twins, um, Josh and Sophie and um, starts off in modern time there you know both of them are working summer jobs Sophie's working at a coffee shop and Josh is working at a bookstore um, and his you know his boss the owner of the bookstore is Nick Fleming um, and one day Dr. John D comes in Dr. John D the you know 17th century alchemist comes in and um, tries to steal, steal a book. He, he There's this book, The Codex, and he tries to steal the book, and there's a scuffle between him and Josh, and Josh ends up ripping out two pages of the book. I don't know how this keeps happening. Um, this is a common thing you might notice when there's a book involved. Um, so he rips out two book, two pages, and John D gets, you know, he gets away with the rest of the book. Um, but Nick Fleming confesses to Josh that he is in fact Nicholas Flamel and that he is immortal. Um, and you know, his wife, Paranel, is also immortal and, um, and that, you know, all of a sudden now these, these, both of these kids, these twins are in mortal peril. He basically tells them that they are a part of this prophecy with that is um, connected to the codex and that the fate of the world is now on their shoulders. So the story is, um, it goes so many different places all over the world and it pulls in so many different historical characters. Um, it's really fantastical. It's it's crazy, but it's fun. It's a really fun, adventurous. Um, I would love for this to be a, a movie or a TV show. I think it would be super fun to um, to have something like this as a TV show. Okay, so this one absolutely does not fall into my normal <laughs> my normal theme of of these series but I've enjoyed it. Uh, so far there's 10 books in this series. They're super easy to read. I think I've read the first five. Um, so it's the, it's the Maggie Hope series and it's a mystery series that's set during World War II and it follows Maggie Hope. She is a British born American, um, but she's now living in London during the war and she is this absolute math whiz. And she's, you know, she graduated at top of, top of her class and she's just an absolute genius when it comes to math. But obviously because of her gender, she is only really allowed to be a secretary. She, you know, she wants to help the war effort and so she gets a job as a secretary at, um, for Winston Churchill. That's what starts off the um, it's called Wood Churchill's secretary um, and but because of her just high intellect and she's you know she's very spirited she's very feisty so she gets you know she gets to kind of become a code breaker and it's so it follows her each book is a different you know specific part of her story and like I said, it's a very fun read. It's super, they're, they're really short. They're not very long. The stories are very interesting. Um, although it is set during the war and there's a lot of elements that come into it because she's, you know, she's working for as a, as a spy. Um, but it's not a real heavy, I don't find it to be a super heavy book. It's, um, it's very mystery based and, you know, a lot of kind of, um, interweaving of 
a, a main story arc that keeps you know keeps all the way through and I enjoy it I it's a really fun um, interesting read for me it's it's not something that's super super heavy okay well there's some of my favorite book series I put all the links to the books in the description and if you have any recommendations for books that you think I would like or that you love please send me a message put it in the comments and I will definitely check it out thanks for watching and I'll see you soon bye